Hey guys, welcome back. So we're gonna find out if the COVID vaccine is the mark of the beast, and the answer is no. So you can go ahead and tune out of the video now. No, I'm just kidding. There's actually a couple articles that I have here that are really good, and it seems like the world and everything that's happening right now is uh, we're being conditioned uh, potentially maybe for the end times, but who knows? Look, I get it. People have been saying this for a long time, and uh, maybe you're just saying, hey, Graham, you're a crazy uh, conspiracy theorist, but the Bible does specifically say in both Matthew and Mark and maybe one or two other places that no man knows Knows the time or hour of when Jesus is going to come back. So I just want to set that straight. No one knows. It could be, you know, tomorrow, it could be next year, it could be another hundred years from now. Um, who knows? So I just want to throw out there very quick that the Bible specifically tells us that no one knows. Um, so let's jump into this. And the, we're talking, talking about this mark of the beast. What is this? So it, it talks about in Revelation uh, 13, 16, it says, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And this is talking about the Antichrist. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So I actually have a couple interesting articles. Um, I did a similar video about it maybe a month or two ago, but there's been some new articles that have surfaced that I thought I would throw it in here. And it just seems like the way things are happening, um, it seems like we're definitely being conditioned. And uh, a couple months back, uh, Ticketmaster announced that uh, potentially uh, this year, they might want to, um, when people come into the arenas or maybe watch a sports event, they might want to start giving people vaccines. Um, so I think it's definitely not out of the question and the entire world is on lockdown right now. And it's, it's getting pretty insane. I have a couple articles here that I think are interesting that kind of back up and support this. So uh, this comes from um, scmp.com. Uh, this is the South China uh, MP. So it says, what is China's social credit system and why is it so controversial? So a really interesting article, this came out about six months ago and it was talking about China implementing this new social credit system um, within their country. And I think it's only a matter of time where you start to see other countries try to uh, roll this out. And it's no surprise that China is doing this first. And look, you give them an inch and they're gonna take this thing a mile. So you're gonna see uh, kind of what happens here. And you can actually see now how, um, based on technology, you can see how it's very easy to get some type of one world government. I don't see that's, that's out of the question. I would say even 10 years ago, you might think, hey, this is just a conspiracy, it'll never happen. But it seems like based all of last year, um, I think, that was just the tip of the iceberg and what you're going to see this year is probably going to be 10 times that so it says what is china's social credit system and why is it so controversial china's social credit system is a set of databases and initiatives that monitor and assess the trustworthiness of individuals companies and government entities a good rating could offer priority listen to this just listen to this very closely a good rating could offer priority health care or a deposit free renting of public housing while a negative rating could see individuals banned from flights and trains. This has actually already happened because um, they implemented the system. So you're not even allowed to go on a train ride if you don't fit their criteria of what their social credit system is. It says China's social credit system by its wide definition is a set of databases and initiatives that monitor and assess the trustworthiness of individuals. I think we just read that. Companies and government entities. Each entry is given a social credit score with reward for those who have a high rating and punishments for those with low scores. See, when this gets implemented in China, they're gonna take this a step further. It's, it's again, you're gonna give these guys a, an inch and they're gonna take it a mile. They're gonna start adding things and start tracking things. Just, just watch when this gets implemented. And they actually um, thought this was gonna be implemented um, end of last year, but it doesn't look like it was. But I do find it interesting that China has been pretty quiet on this. So they're probably uh, working on it behind the scenes still. It says the databases are managed by China's economic planner, the National Development and Reform Commission, the People's Bank of China and the country's court system. Most of the data is gathered from traditional sources such as financial, criminal and government records, as well as existing data from registry office offices along with third party party sources such as online credit platforms. The Chinese government is also experimenting with collecting data via video surveillance and real time data transfers such as monitoring emission data from fa uh, factories, although these are not considered primary resources. The state council first outlined the plan in 2014 covering individuals businesses, social interactions, and judicial administration with the system expect, expected to be rolled out by the end of 2020. And I actually tried to find an article if this is already uh, rolled out. I couldn't find it. So they're probably definitely still working on the back end, but I, it's probably going to be rolled out this year. And while it is similar to other credit ratings provided for individuals and corporations in other countries, 
The Chinese version is also capable of expanding from personal credit to other aspects of life to include bill payment payments and criminal convic uh, convictions. So this one right here is pretty concerning. So you have the, the Chinese Communist Party and you have to ask yourself, what is a criminal conviction? They're going around and getting rid of churches. Um, they're, you know, pastors. I, I did an article or a video, uh, it was about a month ago, where pastors are being kicked out of China just from, you know, preaching the Bible. So um, you'd have to find out what their definition is of a criminal conviction. Because when it comes to China, it can be something very small. And then you won't be able to access their trains or subways or whatever. It's, it's pretty insane to me. Um, so uh, let's see next year business entities including the foreign businesses in China are subject to a corporate credit system tracking information such as tax payments bank loan repayments and employment disputes those who lose credibility will find it hard to make a tiny step in society that's true so how is uh, how does uh, China's social credit system work the social credit system compiles a score for both individuals and companies after collected it, collecting aggregating and analyzing data from different sources for businesses in addition to its own operations, companies are asked to submit information on their partners and suppliers to local and national authorities. Bad behavior, low trustworthiness, and ratings from suppliers and customers will also influence a company's own credit score. A good re uh, rating will lead to rewards, while a poor rating could see an individual or a company punished or sanctioned, or better health care, like I said before. Individuals who are deemed untrustworthy could face a number of restrictions affecting areas including loans, traveling by air and rail, as well as education. And a bid to encourage good behavior, some local governments have offered incentives such as prioritizing healthcare provision and waiving deposits to rent public housing. According to a report on the corporate social credit system published by the European Chamber of Commerce in China, in 2019, the reward mechanism is not as developed as the sanctioning element. The report found that sanctions are not limited to fines or court orders, and companies that have been blacklisted could face higher inspection rates and targeted audits. Restrictions and government approvals of land, use rights, and investment permits. They may also be excluded from pre preferential policies such as subsidies and tax rebates, as well as, a, as face restrictions on public procurement. Individual and companies deemed untrustworthy will be also be publicly named and shamed. That's very hardcore. So with these different audits, um, some companies are going to receive special treatment. So you have to be this perfect citizen in the government's eyes to get all these special treatment options. Why has China set up a social credit system? The aim of the system is to improve transparency for the public, although it also serves. Here it is right here as a tool for the government to impose control on almost all aspects of citizens' lives. If you think this isn't coming to the U.S. soon, it's it's practically here, but just wait till this year, it's gonna get worse. But um, I was watching some videos of people that are in China and they hate this stuff. They said that their entire uh, life is just controlled uh, by the government. The NDRC said in July 2019 that 2.56 million people had been restricted from taking flights, 90,000 people have been prevented from using high-speed rail services, 300,000 people have been deemed untrustworthy by Chinese courts. I really wanna know what the word untrustworthy means. Is this just anything that goes against the government is untrustworthy? That's a, it's a very fine line that I would like to know there. So uh, I just thought that was super interesting. And then here's another article from uh, the usembassy.gov talking about the Philippines, what's going on over there. Um, this just hit. It says uh, the U.S. Embassy continues to closely monitor COVID-19 developments in the Philippines. The Philippine Department of Health provides regular updates on the number of confirmed cases. Through January 15th, 2021, the Philippine government has suspended all flights from the United Kingdom and will bar entry to travelers origina uh, originating or transitioning from the following locations, United Kingdom, South Africa, and then at least uh, a bunch of other countries. Passengers already in transit who were in any of the locations listed above within 14 days of their arrival in the Philippines and who arrive before December 30th, 2020 will be allowed entry but are subject to a mandatory 14-day quarantine regardless of a negative RT-PCR result. The following quarantine classification, classification shall be in effect through January 31st. If you know anything about these uh, quarantines, regulations, we were supposed to be locked down for two weeks and here we are almost a year later. Uh, so this date is definitely probably going to be extending. 
But listen to this. Uh, just a couple more slides here. Uh, the timing of each curfew is set by the local government. Quarantine information. Quarantine is regarded, uh, required for 14 days in a government-controlled hotel facility. They say, hey, go ahead, come to our uh, government uh, facility to be quarantined. We saw that happen in China, and people started disappearing. So we have to monitor these government facilities and figure out what they're doing in here. Individuals granted permission to enter by the Philippines authorities must have a confirmed booking for at least two days at a hotel accredited by the Philippine Tourism and Health Agencies while waiting for their COVID-19 test results. U.S. citizens must stay at the booked hotel until they receive a Philippine Bureau of Quarantine Medical Certificate. Wow, so you're going to get uh, your own certificate, okay? Just wait till um, that happens here. You just try to go to a grocery store or something. And we're going to wrap this all up. It's going to make sense here in just uh, a couple minutes. Fines for non-compliance. Consequences such as fines or arrest for non-compliance. So you're going to be arrested by not following their rules. And um, I actually know someone personally, uh, they're vacationing and they're trying to get back home and they had to trans, uh, uh, travel through New Mexico and they actually had to go around. They weren't allowed to go, um, go directly through because uh, they had people set up on the state border saying, hey, no, you got to go back or you got to go a different direction. This stuff is already here in the U.S., um, and I actually heard someone say, I think Philadelphia as well, uh, they're doing this as well. So what, what's happening here? So uh, this is the last article here. And this actually came out a couple of years ago where there's a company in Wisconsin that's already uh, microchipping their employees uh, with their hand. And the employee, they, goes, they can um, go over to a vending machine, they just wave their hand and uh, food or a drink or something comes out. So this technology is already here. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if China is one of the first people to start doing this. So when we look at Revelation 13, 16, I don't think this is out of the question after reading these articles. And it says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free or bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And there's actually another scripture, either be in or on. So it may be some type of tattoo. And as you can see here, these employees are already getting chips. So I wouldn't be surprised if China wants to roll this out um, anytime soon. And again, Ticketmaster, they already said they want to have some kind of a vaccine or their uh, sporting events. So the entire world is on lockdown right now. And it says, and that no man might buy or sell. I don't think that's out of the question either. Uh, again, I don't think it's in the near future where maybe you can't go to a grocery store and buy some food or go into a Target and Walmart. They're going to say, hey, you know, show us uh, your ticket or maybe some type of, of mark. So I think 10 years ago, this would have been out of the question, but I just feel like things are unfolding right now. And I think this is very doable that within the next year or so, this could probably happen. So again, I could be totally wrong. It, it might not happen for another hundred years, who knows, but I think everything is, is planned and we have the technology capabilities to see all this happen. So uh, that's it. Um, if you're not a Christian, this is how you do it. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10, this is the New Testament. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins. Um, you rose three days later and I want you to come into my life and take over. And that's all you have to do. You say that prayer out loud and then he comes into your life and you're a Christian. And when you die, you'll be with him in heaven. And I would definitely start with the King James Bible and um, read the, the New Testament. Start with the book of John. Those are the first uh, four gospels. But the book of John talks about um, the birth of Jesus all the way his crucifixion to the resurrection. And it's a fantastic place to start. So uh, that's it. We have new videos come out every Monday and Thursday. If this is your first time here or been here multiple times, go ahead and subscribe and share. Those are the number one things you can do to help this channel grow. So appreciate it. See you guys next time.